What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show. We'll be discuss the stimulus package update, the American Families Plan, daily news, pretty much everything going on here in our country and in Washington, D.C., money, investing, the stock market, everything you need to know about on a daily basis. Remember that new videos come out here on our channel every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't yet so you don't miss out on new videos. It's completely free to do so. And if you find these videos helpful, don't forget to hit the like button for us down below. We got a lot to talk about in this video, uh, as well as President Biden announcing when he's going to be signing the bill into law, as well as um, new negotiations about what's going on in the House and the Senate and the Congressional Budget Office score coming back. Uh, it's starting to come back now. And uh, we're going to go over a lot of different things in this video. So uh, let's just jump right in because we got a lot to cover here. So here we go. Uh, number one, <laughs> Johnson & Johnson is in the news. Be I, I can't even make this stuff up here. Johnson & Johnson has uh, won a lawsuit to halt 38,000 baby powder lawsuits amid filing bankruptcy. This is from Bloomberg. Can't make this stuff up. Check this out here. Uh, Johnson & Johnson won court approval to halt tens of thousands of lawsuits alleging its baby powder caused ovarian cancer and other health problems in women. Yeah, clearing a hurdle in front of its plan to pay $2 billion or more to end claims related to baby powders and other talc-based products. Yeah, so they won a court approval to halt tens of thousands of lawsuits. Yeah, okay, so the lawsuits are halted, okay? The plan is part of a legal strategy known as the Texas Two-Step, in which Johnson & Johnson created a unit in Texas to hold all of the lawsuits, then transferred that unit to North Carolina and placed it in bankruptcy. The proceedings halted suits against the unit in court protection but still left Johnson & Johnson exposed to some 38,000 lawsuits, some of which are nearing jury verdicts. Yeah, now this is directly from Bloomberg.com. Yeah, so Johnson & Johnson had these lawsuits. Johnson & Johnson, had they have been placed into bankruptcy. I know I might be in the way here a little bit in the corner. Uh, let me remove myself here from the corner, but still left Johnson & Johnson exposed to some 38,000 lawsuits, uh, which have now been halted and placed Johnson & Johnson into bankruptcy. Yeah, major, major news here. Okay, next up, the physical infrastructure package that has now been passed for several days now in the House was passed in the Senate in August bipartisan package. It had 19 Republicans in the Senate, including Republican leader Mitch McConnell. It was passed in August, waited since August uh, in the House because of, well, a lot of back and forth between Democrats on whether the stimulus package was going to be passed first, which was the original plan. And at the last minute, the Democrats made a last minute deal amongst themselves to um, have a written document between uh, moderate Democrats and progressive Democrats that basically said if the Congressional Budget Office score comes back between um, or from the Congressional Budget Office that says the stimulus package uh, score from the Congressional Budget Office comes back as intended, that the moderate Democrats will pass the stimulus package in the House no later than November 15th, provided that the score comes back by then and as intended. I'll get to that here uh, in just a minute here. The score is actually starting to come back now. Well, it, the, the bill's been passed, the physical infrastructure bill, for several days. And people, people are starting to ask, 
why hasn't President Biden signed this? It was so urgent. Well, check this out. And here's the headline here from the New York Post. And the headline kind of <laughs> kind of uh, describes the day. Biden to sign the urgent $1.2 trillion physical infrastructure package later on this upcoming Monday. <laughs> so, yeah, what is that in like five more days? He's going to sign the physical infrastructure package. So for some reason, they're going to now wait several more days and sign it on Monday. We're not sure why they're going to wait that long. Maybe there's some reason. You can let me know your thoughts in the comments if you think there's some reason they're waiting this long. Maybe there's some hidden agenda. Uh, but this urgent infrastructure package that they initially said would be signed as soon and they were going to rush it down uh, to the Oval Office and they were going to sign it as soon as possible. Now they're waiting all the way till this upcoming Monday. But at least Biden has announced that he is going to sign it and they're waiting till Monday. Now, by the way, in case you were wondering here, you can see here that from this Google search, how long does a president have to sign a bill once it's passed by the House and the Senate? You can see here the president has 10 days, excluding Sundays, to sign a bill passed by Congress. And if a president doesn't sign a bill within those 10 days, a bill becomes law. If signed by the president or if not signed by the president within 10 days, and Congress is in session. So basically, um, the president's going to sign, by my count, if I'm counting correctly, not excluding Sundays and the day that was passed, I think that's the ninth day. Um, so basically, he's signing it like the second to last day before he has to sign it or it'll go into law anyways. Uh, they have that rule there in case like the president gets sick or is uh, becomes out of duty or is overseas or for whatever reason, uh, if the House and Senate passes the bill, uh, the president cannot indefinitely hold a bill like the speaker and the Senate majority leader can do. Um, that's kind of the check and balance systems uh, that the House, Senate, and uh, the president have. So, uh, and that's kind of the the checks and balance system. So if the if Congress passes a bill, the president cannot um, just hold it. He has to either sign it or veto it. Okay, and that makes sense because uh, you can't just hold the bill forever. You have to sign it or veto it. And if you have to veto it, then it goes back to Congress and they have the chance to override the veto, um, which is, is much more difficult to do. You need a two-thirds majority in the Senate to do that. Uh, it's called a supermajority. So... Um, he says he's going to sign it on Monday, so you would think that's what he's going to do. But you also, he also said he was going to sign it as soon as he got it, and uh, he's delayed it this long. Maybe there's some other reasoning here. I'll keep you up to date here. Uh, we'll see if he signs the physical infrastructure bill on Monday. You never know at this point. Maybe, maybe there's some other reason. Uh, I'll, I'll keep you up to date. Also, the uh, Congressional Budget Office is uh, starting to release, you can see here, the Budget Scorekeeper is starting to release estimates for the Democrats' massive social spending plan, aka the stimulus package. Um, so they're now starting to release it piece by piece. Um, so now it's starting to be released. Here's the details. Okay, the Congressional Budget Office has begun releasing new estimates. Okay, estimates is the key word there. We'll have to see what this becomes here. Of portions, estimates of portions of the Democrats' sweeping trillion-dollar social spending packets. <laughs> Again, why is it estimates? Again, this is... We thought this was supposed to be the exact math here, but maybe uh, that's coming later. Maybe they're kind of giving us the estimates first, and then we're going to get the exact math. 
Uh, maybe they're kind of giving us preliminary reports and then they're going to give us the exact math. After House leadership recently held off on voting on the stimulus plan amid pushback from moderates who called for the information, the nonpartisan budget scorekeeper began releasing estimates for funding legislation crafted by four of the 13 House committees that worked together over the summer to craft a massive bill, an estimated component of Biden's legis legislative agenda. The agency tasked with producing formal cost estimates for congressional legislation scored by potential budgetary effects of funding legislation by the House's Veterans Affairs, Small Business, Homeland Security, and Science, Space, and Technology Committees. The office estimated the legislative scored so far would amount to direct spending outlays of $20.5 billion from 2022 to 2031. It is expected to score the overall bill in the coming weeks. Yeah, so that's interesting here. The new score, newly scored spending would cover proposals funding for a wide range of investments, including infrastructure improvements for the Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, space and air quality, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Party plans to primarily pay for the investments using tax increases targeted to high-income households and corporations. The CBO said the funding in those areas would not add to the deficit after 10 years. I also want to note a couple other things. I have another interview. I can't even remember if I played that particular interview on the show because I watched so many interviews. I had another interview that said that, number one, that the estimates that the Democrats in the House might just vote on the Congressional Budget Office with just the estimates or the preliminary records, reports or what comes back from the Congressional Budget Office by the 15th if they don't have everything by then or what they do have by then. So keep that in mind. Uh, I can't remember if I showed that interview or not. You can let me know down below in the comments because, again, I see I just see so many interviews that I uh, can't remember if I've shown that or not. Also, I want to show you this report here. Another independent analysis says that the budget bill, stimulus package, could add $200 billion to the deficit. Uh, this is an independent analysis, and the score would fall short of lawmakers' ambitions to fully pay for uh, the climate and the social spending package. Now, if this happens, all that would basically mean is they would probably just have to remove some things, which they're probably going to do anyways, uh, especially the immigration portion of the bill, um, which is probably going to be removed anyways from uh, the Senate parliamentarian, which I believe they're going to say in here is $100 billion dollars. Yeah, so this report here says that House Democrats' budget reconciliation bill could increase the federal deficits by $200 billion over 10 years. And again, this is an independent report. This is not actually from the Congressional Budget Office. Um, falling short of lawmakers' ambitions to fully pay for the climate and social spending package, a nonpartisan budget watchdog group said on Monday. The Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget said in an analysis that the House Democrats' latest version of the bill includes $2.4 trillion in spending. So that the bill is actually up to $2.4 trillion as they're literally changing this by the day. And tax expenditures are now only paid for $2.2 trillion. And this includes the now SALT tax uh, deduction, which has been raised for uh, from $10,000 to $80,000. So this is for uh, if you pay up to $80,000 per year in state and local taxes, that you can deduct up to $80,000 if you pay that much in state and local taxes instead of being capped at only $10,000 in state and local taxes if you pay that much. You can see here, uh, this is, now the reason they have this in here is because there's some moderate Democrats that are demanding as part of negotiations that it must be in here or they're not going to vote for the bill. 
And this is part of the ongoing negotiations that this is where give and take comes in. And that if you just like Joe Manchin, that if you, there's moderate Democrats in the House that uh, and we have uh, Josh Gottenheimer and some Democrats from New York, New Jersey and California that say we're high tax states and a lot of the middle class um, pay a lot of state and local taxes, S-A-L-T, SALT taxes, stands for state and local taxes. And they say a lot of the middle class in our state pay a lot of state and local taxes. And uh, they're demanding that the state and local tax cap be raised to over $10,000 in this bill, or they're not going to vote for the bill. And remember that they need all 50 senators in the Senate to vote for it, and they can only afford three people in the House Democrats to uh, vote no. So there's give and take on a lot of different bills or a lot of different items in the bill. And this is one of them. And this is part of the negotiations in the bill. And so this item has been added into the bill. Now, this bill has kind of uh, gone back up to remember initially it went from 3.5 trillion all the way down to 1.75 trillion. Now it's apparently gone back up to 2.4 trillion. But Immigration is probably going to be removed. Uh, they're saying that's at least $100 billion or so. So that's going to go back down. And when Joe Manchin, or if the House passes it here, um, as soon as the Congressional Budget Office comes back, there's also an agreement between the House Democrats that if the Congressional Budget Office report comes back and it's to their liking, that they're going to vote on it by the 15th of this month. So in like four days. So um, we'll see if that's going to happen because we don't know exactly what's going to happen with the Congressional Budget Office um, report to for them to vote on it by the 15th. So that's kind of up in the air. The other big thing is that they kind of have to pass the stimulus package by December 3rd or somewhere around there because December 3rd is the government shutdown date and the debt limit date. Coincidentally, now the debt limit date is an estimated date that could be pushed back or pushed forward. Uh, the Treasury is um, already running extraordinary measures where they're going to try to stretch that out. But the government is going to shut down again on December 3rd. And December 3rd is ironically the same date that the government is going to run out of money called the debt limit, where they literally can't print any more money unless they pass a bill by Congress, known as the debt limit. The Treasury Department will literally run out of money, and uh, they can't fulfill their debt obligations just for past debt to pay the interest on their past debt and won't be able to issue new child tax credit payments, um, payments to bondholders, interest payments, um, payments to servicemen. Uh, pre President Biden has even said that Social Security payments could be delayed because of this. All that's going to happen in less than four weeks, almost like three weeks from now. So December 3rd is a very big date, and they have to pass the stimulus package by then because the Republicans have said they're not going to help pass that this time around because Mitch McConnell helped pass it last time around with 11 Republicans in the Senate. But right after they passed it, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, a Democrat, blasted them and basically said, he just completely just went on a rant and just completely just blasted them for lack of a better term and completely just off put the Republicans. And then the Republicans basically said, well, we're not helping you ever again, or at least in the near term, pass this again. So they basically said the Democrats have to pass this on their own through the reconciliation process with the stimulus package. So basically, this, the Democrats have to pass this package by then. Or else, <laughs> what, the country defaults? Which we can't happen. That's never happened before. We, that is just like the cataclysmic thing that can't happen. Meanwhile, the Democrats haven't even confirmed if they're going to pass the debt limit in the stimulus package. Like, are, they, are they even going to tell us if they're going to do that? Like... <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Bueller, 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 anybody? Hello, anybody gonna tell us? 
So really, the Democrats have a lot of work to do. They have to pass this bill in the House. They got to get this congressional budget report back. All the Democrats in the House agreed. They did a test vote after they passed the physical infrastructure package. Um, and all the Democrats voted yes on this test vote, saying that they were going to vote yes on the stimulus package in the House and that they're waiting to vote yes. They all voted yes on the test vote. So if the Congressional Budget Office report comes back and it's as expected, they're, they're just waiting to vote yes if this Congressional Budget Office report comes back and expected. If it comes back as expected. If it's not as expected, well, they may have to remove some things like immigration. I kind of feel like Nancy Pelosi put the immigration reform back in there as a symbolic measure. They already know that the Senate parliamentarian ruled that it, it can't be in there. Um, Nancy Pelosi put it back in there as a symbolic measure. But if they, if they need to start doing cost saving measures to make sure the bill is paid for, well, you might as well just start removing that because you know that they're going to remove it in the Senate anyway. So, uh, and Joe Manchin's not going to vote for that anyway. So, um, yeah, there's, there's just really a lot going on here. I'm going to keep you up to date with everything going on here with this next stimulus package. Uh, yeah, there, there's a lot here. And remember, they can add anything in here. There's already uh, proposed one year of an extension for the child tax credits. Um, they want to continue that on for one more year of monthly payments. Um, and they can add in stimulus checks for adults at any given time. Um, and especially uh, if they end up removing things, there might be you know, be something like that in there. So I will keep up to date with everything here. Make sure to subscribe down below. New videos come out every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, I just had two really good videos that just came out. You can click here to see how Senator Joe Manchin was kind of, uh, had, had a huge protest mob kind of uh, corner him. Click here to watch that if you haven't seen that. And this video has nine different stimulus checks and stimulus programs that are going out right now. So click on one of those videos to watch them next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.